This is the Action Movie Guys podcast, bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades, plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now, your hosts of the Action Movie Guys podcast, Alex and Nate. All right, welcome everyone to a brand new episode of the Action Movie Guys podcast, episode 213. We're hitting the sequel to Resident Evil. This is Resident Evil Apocalypse from 2004. I'm your host, Alex Figueroa. My co-host is... Nate from Netflix Reviews. All right, Nate. How long has it been since you've seen uh, Resident Evil Apocalypse? It's been a while. Now that I was... When I was watching it, there was a lot of parts I remembered. And honestly, there was a lot of parts I didn't remember. So I'm going to say it's been quite a while since I've seen it. If I had to put a number on it, I'm going to go with nine years. (laughs) I might be right. It might be wrong. I don't know. It's been at least nine years. Yeah, I mean, for me, it, like I said, I saw it on the rewatch of the 4K set, but I did see this in the theater because my wife Dang. was like, wait a minute, we did see this together in the theater. And I was like, that's right, we did. And I had a great experience in the theater with this movie. I, I can't wait for us to dive into the movie, but I do remember leaving the theater kind of hyped. I was like, oh boy. This was the first one I saw at the theater because the first one, okay. I remember, I saw it at my cousin's house on DVD. We rented it. This one was the first one. I saw all the rest at the theater. And I can't believe now that you just said, I can't believe this movie's 18 years old already. That's kind of wild but it is it is but let's check out what the critics and the audience have to say about resident evil apocalypse Neat. Well, we're going to continue the trend uh, from okay. the last movie. This is got one score that's really low and one score that's way different. This sits at a cr- critic score of 19%. Way worse than the first movie, even. 19%. Audience score, much different, 60%. So more in line with the first movie. But this is this franchise. This is this franchise. These are the scores of this franchise. And critics hate it and People, the general public seems to enjoy them for the most part. So not that surprising to me. Well, you know, it's funny. I I kept records of the first one because I wanted to continue. Okay. When we get to the last one, I think it's called Final Chapter. I wanted to see where the Rotten Tomatoes go up and down. Okay. Well, the first one was 35% critics. 16% difference. It's a drop. Yeah. Yeah. And then the audience score was 67%. So So it dropped by 7%. So they're closer. Yeah. The the audience was closer. The critics said, what the, what's going on? But neither. (laughs) one is very good (laughs) yeah i mean well we're gonna find out in our movie review are we gonna lean towards the critic side are we gonna lean more towards the audience so with that said let's start it all off with the lead character of course alice take it away nate uh, this is. I'm gonna let you guys. I'm gonna let you know up front, Alex. Uh-oh. It's gonna be a roller coaster of a review. <laughs> I, I'll be honest with you. I Uh-oh. side with the critics on some stuff, and I side with the audience on some other stuff. This is such a mixed bag. Of a movie. And we're starting off for me on the down. Listen, Alice in this movie makes no sense. <laughs> this movie makes no sense in a lot of ways. So, yeah. number one, you get this beginning part, right? You remember how we ended the last movie? She walks out in the street with the shotgun and was like, oh, wow, this is crazy. The world's crazy. Oh my God. This one, this movie does, this starts the trend of something I hate with the Resident Evil. I already the know. First beginning has to do a whole <laughs> recap of the last movie. Like, <laughs> previously on Resident <laughs> Evil. It's like it's like a TV show. I'm like, what is, what is this? So we get yeah. that, right? She's like, my name is Alice. I was the head of security. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Okay, this movie just came out a couple years ago. You don't have to do this thing, but whatever. The fact is, the, they show what happens when they send the team in, remember? Because at the end, that guy's like, send a team into the hive. We we'll want to get the information. They go in. It shows what happens. All the zombies come rushing out. They get unleash them on the world. This is, according to what happens in the movie, this takes place like 13 hours after the first movie. Like, yes. it's right yes. after. Okay. Yeah. Now, at the end of that movie, she got like a shaved head and got like wires in her hair and all this stuff. And then in this movie, she got a full head of hair, no shaved head. Like, it doesn't make sense. Her hair grew back in 13 hours, apparently. Also, she was out of it. They don't say how long, so that's okay as far as when they get taken away from yeah. the uh, from the thing. But, but, but <laughs> they did a lot of experiments on her, apparently, in, like, two hours. That she now has powers. She, in the first movie, she's somewhat likable. She's confused. She has amnesia. In this movie, she comes right out. She comes flying in on a motorcycle. She's doing karate. She could (laughs) throw the motorcycle in the air. And she like, she's too good already, in my opinion. And this was always, now that I'm watching it, I remember it. It always bugged me. It's like, dude, really? She's just super mega. I gave her a two. And there's no back. There's still no, there's no story for her. You know what I mean? Like, she's there. 
But the only thing you get story-wise is she knows the guy who's nemesis. His name is like Matt or whatever. She's yeah, like, Matt. Matt. Oh, Matt. Because she could see his one eye. Oh, Matt. <laughs> Matt. Oh, Matt. Oh, Matt. Yeah, he's like. like that's the only, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the only thing you get. Other yeah. than that, she's just super ultra mega killer machine. She ta- all, all her line delivery is like very monotone. We've got to get out of here. We've got to get out of this city. Let's get on this bus. Let's leave. I don't really like her in this, to be honest. I gave her a two. All right, so I already know where we're going to go. It's going to be a super <laughs> seesaw of a review here. Yeah. Okay, so I do. I understand everything you're saying, but I, I agree. I mean, I agree with a lot of <laughs> the stuff that you're you saying just here. don't care. <laughs> but the, the, the funny thing is, is that the complaints that you're, you're, you're ranting about, to me, falls more on the line of story, not character. But I kind of agree. I understand where, where you're talking from. I gave her a four. Now, the reason I gave her a four, not the story around her, (laughs) I gave her a four. She was was she better than Alice from Resident Evil one? The answer is yes. She fought more. Right. She didn't have the amnesia. They pumped her with tons of T virus and then took it away. Like they kept injecting her and keep re-injecting her with antivirus. I don't know why, which I don't know why they did that, but whatever. So now she's immune to getting bit. So she's immune to all this stuff. Now she's faster. She's stronger. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, she has powers now. Well, yeah, because she looks... powers. But she yeah, at the end of the, the movie, camera at the end and makes that guy bleed from his head. I'm like, what the Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. Now, now they enhanced her even more. Yeah. The pro... That's the fun part. That's the part that I enjoy. The parts that I'm like, okay... You totally made this movie into something else than it wasn't even part one. Like, that's the thing about this movie. And I know I'm going to go right into storyline. I'm doing the same shit you're doing. Well, you can't, because what. you can't help it. Because you when can't. you're talking about a character, it's yeah. how is this character written in the story? And it doesn't make any sense. It does not. I felt like I felt like this movie went a total 360 to what the, I think the franchise should have been. Right. Alice was very... You're right. She's monotone. Alice was very grounded. Like she wasn't super. Like she wasn't that great because they hit her with the amnesia gas that supposedly takes an hour. But in the movie, it took 10 hours for her to get her stuff back. So I was like, it is what it is. In this one, you're absolutely right. They experimented on her for what? Because honestly, she did everything she did. And I was like, okay, this is really cool. But in the other side of the coin, it it didn't take a like they took away her her humanity. I guess that's the way I'm trying to say it. You hit right? the nail on the head. That's why I didn't like it. She's no longer yeah. a human. She's a super, like, Goku from Dragon yeah, Ball she's, Z. Yeah, she's, like, augmented. Yeah. I guess that's what it is, right? Like, when yeah, you yeah. when you get enhanced. Like, they augmented her in the second movie. <laughs> yeah. Like, in the beginning of the movie, you're absolutely right. Like, she literally woke up the same as the other one. Because I literally thought, and I totally forgot, I thought this movie starts off with her with the shotgun and she's searching for clothes. Because I was like, okay, great. This movie went right back to the beginning. She had to react the scenes that she did. Because she was like, Previously on Resident Evil. Yeah. My name is Alice. And, I'm and Alice. I was the head of security. I'm on a seesaw here. Yeah. I enjoy everything that she did. I just don't... You already know where storyline's going to go. <laughs> but <laughs> Let's be honest. I, I agree with you yeah. in the sense of she was great in the action scenes. I, I, yeah. I like Mila jo- And Mila Jovovich, okay, her line delivery wasn't amazing, Mm-mm. but... But she was still really good in the physical aspect of it. She looked great. She did the fighting was great. Yes. But just as a character, it's like, what is she? What is this? You know what? I gave her a four. Mm-hmm. Now that we're talking about it, I'm going to deduct it back down. <laughs> I'm going to give her a three. I'm going to give okay. her in the balance between human and augmented. I just got to put her in the <laughs> middle. Yeah, she's yeah. a mutant right now. She, so she I'm, really I'm going to I'm gonna put her in a three category because honestly, if it would have been a four if they totally never gave away, like, made her still human but then towards the end maybe the t-virus kicks in when she injects herself or something figures yeah. something out but anyway i gave it a three you gave it a two yeah. main villain which is nemesis but now is umbrella company right so right so <clears throat> the villain in this one is also a uh, fake liam neeson um, <laughs> 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 right the guy looks yeah, like he's looked like Liam Neeson. So that yeah. actor, that actor's name Thomas Kretschmann. He's been in a lot of stuff. He's a good actor. Don't get me wrong, but he looks like Liam Neeson, like younger. His name is Major Kane. He's one of. The, this is just like the first movie where there's like many villains because you got the zombies, mm-hmm. you get Nemesis who gets unleashed by this guy, Major Kane, right? And then you have Major Kane. So really three. Now in the first movie, I gave it, I think I gave the total like a three. You gave a four. I'm going to actually agree with you in this movie. I actually gave the villains a four. I think they're better. I think the zombies are better in this one. They're more traditional, but I'd like them out in the streets 
better than in the you know facility for some reason. The hordes of zombies. I thought the uh, the liquors. This was only a couple years later, and the CGI. It's it, it's 2004, but it looked better in my opinion. They looked yeah, better, yeah. so they they were cool. The scene in the church with them that was fun. Um, so you get them. So the the liquors are better. The zombies are better. Major Kane. At least there's a face that you could put to Umbrella yeah. as a villain. So that was cool. And I thought Nemesis look. I I still think he looks cool. I don't know. He looks like the game. It's practical. So it's like a guy in a suit. So he's really huge. He has the mask. I'm always a fan of practical. Practical, so I'm glad he's not just a big CGI like walking guy. He even does some fight scenes and they edited it in a way where, you know, you could tell the guy can't move as fast, but I think they did a good job. I gave him a four. I thought the I thought the villain category here was better than the villain category in the first movie on the whole. But yeah, I'll let you go. I, I enjoyed it. I gave him a four. I, I agree. I, I gave it a four. I slapped a four on this. I was like, wait a minute. The zombies in this movie should have been the zombies in the first movie. I'm sorry. That that mansion should have been bombarded with zombies, and I would have loved it. But yeah. in this one, I loved it. I, I thought it was genius. I, I thought, to be honest with you, the movie for the first one should have ended with them reopening the hive and everyone busting out, and it just ends. And then you yeah. see, like, the silhouette of all of them running, and then the camera pans up, and all you see is Raccoon City. Like, mm-hmm. welcome to Raccoon City. I think that would have been cool. The, I mean, to be honest, it should have just ended like that. Like, the, 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 they come out, they run, and then you just see them running towards Raccoon City. Yeah. And you'd be like, oh, shit, they go to Raccoon City, man. <laughs> but they didn't do that. They started with Alice again. So, anyway, I thought the beginning was awesome. And I said, yo, this is cool. I was digging it. I said, whoa, I was getting it. And I'm not, I'm not, I was really into the movie. Like, the first yeah. half of the movie I was into, I was like, yo, I was like, this is pretty good storyline with the villains and everything. Then they showed my man in the wheelchair. Which I was like, okay, I remember he's Moriarty in the Sherlock yeah. movie. Jared mm-hmm. Harris. Yeah, he's, he's a great actor. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a great actor. I like him. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. He reminded me in the wheelchair. He reminded me the dude from uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, the one that makes Sally. Remember the one that... <laughs> <laughs> the <bald> guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You know what I'm talking about, right? He yeah, goes, yeah. Sally, where are you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I guarantee you, they make a live action. He's going to play Jared the Harris. dude in the wheelchair. Play that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where are you, Sally? Yeah. Frog's breath. Nemesis looked amazing. I yeah. said, yeah, okay. Now, this puts a shame to the mummy returns because, for the right. love of God, you cannot put the rock in a, a scorpion ass practical looking thing. No, they did not. The mem- nemesis did look badass. I like him yeah, in his gun, sequences. Bro, that gun was sick. That gun was sick. And the bazooka, which I don't know, like, where the hell did you carry? I was like, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. Video Just game villain. It. Yeah, yeah, it was great. The liquors was okay. I wasn't too thrilled with the scene in the church with all three liquors. I felt yeah. like the movement looked very like copy and paste, like when they were moving like They're super fast. fast. Yeah, yeah. just I was like, what are they? I was like, what? look that way. They were like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, cut. But yeah, overall, I think. Oh, and then the main dude, which yeah, the Liam Neeson ripoff. He was good. He was a dick. And I was like, man, I was like, okay. I was like, okay, I see where you coming with this. He should have survived. Made it even better. Because then you get more him being a douche. But look, other than that, I slapped it a four. I think he was very good. I think the villains here had, I had no problems with the villains in this movie, to be honest with you. So a four across the board, action sequence. Well, guess what? We're going to stay a little high because this one has way, way better action than the first movie. Way better. It's not even close. The first one has, first of all, it doesn't even have a lot of action. It has some cool moments, but this one is an action movie. This is a full on action movie you got the church scene no you didn't love it but it's still it's like a long set piece there's lots of shooting yeah. liquors jumping around she comes in on the motorcycle she throws the motorcycle in the air and blows the guy up like pretty cool right then you have of course you have just general zombie chaos kind of throughout right at any time these zombies just start swarming on people you got Oliveira but from speaking of the mummy the uh, the guy from the mummy you got uh Oliveira out there with the with the stars unit fighting off zombies. Then you got the sniper guy on the roof. He's shooting some zombies. You got uh, the the finale out in the outside with Alice when oh, she yeah. comes running, the part that everyone remembers when she's running down the building, starts fighting everybody. You get Nemesis. Like, there's a lot of action. Um, The only reason I didn't give it a five is it's some of it is not it's executed in a very early 2000s style editing it does jump around a little bit it's a little music video-y if if that makes any sense Mm -hmm. um this is where they started to implement a little bit of slow motion it's not too egregious here 
Um, it's usually it's used mostly pretty well, but I love Nemesis. I love the machine gun. I love his little rocket launcher that he got. Yeah, this it's got a little bit of everything. I gave it a four. I think it's really strong, and it's probably the strongest part of the whole movie. Like the action scenes are the best part of the movie, and they're mostly really well done. Only one I didn't like is I don't like the one with the dogs in the school. Like mm. it was silly to me. It, it was kind of silly. Like okay, we did the dogs in the first movie. That was fine. They tried to do it again. And it was like, it was not as good even. And I hate the part where like, they, she opens the gas. She thro- she lights the match. She she throws it. It, it f- fades on the way out, right? Now, Alice happens to be smoking a cigarette right outside <laughs> while all this is happening. She's just, literally, she's standing in the hallway smoking a cigarette. Then she flicks it, but the door's closed. So if that dog didn't jump through that window... It wouldn't have blown up. She would have just flicked the cigarette and it would have hit the closed door. All of it's very weird to me. <laughs> you know how I am with the coincidences thing. I'm just not a fan. It's like, okay, well, he just happened to jump through a door at that moment. Either way, besides that, I still give it a four. That's just a minor complaint. All right, so all right, so let's do it this way with the action. Because I was torn. I, I was torn with this one. I was very torn with this one. I was like, does it have plenty of action? Absolutely. It has tons of action. A lot of action. Tons of guns blazing fighting hand to hand. I was like, all right, great. That's my five. I'm like, it's going towards the five. Then I start to deduct points where it doesn't make sense in certain sequences. Like if it, I mean, if, if again, I'm not a, a stunt coordinator. I am not an action guy who puts stuff together, but I think I could if I, <laughs> you gave me the opportunity because there's a lot of parts of the movie that doesn't make sense. For instance, now that I tell you, you're going to be like, oh shit, you're right. Where these helicopters come from when she started running through? First of all, she walked into the building and she was already in the 10th floor of the building, which I was like. That's what I was saying. The editing is not great. I had to deduct some points there because I was like, wait a minute. I said, she entered the building and the helicopters are hovering over everyone. So I was like, there's no way that he could shoot through the first floor. So she's on an above level and she's running. Going, ah! Then all of a sudden she's cut. She's coming through the front door again, which I mean, she jumps out of the whatever she did. But and, and it didn't make to me. It didn't make sense. Like that sequence is that I was just like, it was a cool sequence because it reminds me of yeah, a Stallone yeah. movie, him running and everyone shooting behind him. I was yeah, like, that cool. is awesome. Very cool. She looks great doing her action sequences. I was like, that's a fun nitpick there. The motorcycle scene when she entered was god awful. It reminded me of the Matrix rope scene. Where you see that she's about, she's holding the rope when they flip her, then they digitally remove the rope, and you can see it looks horrible when the, she flips backwards and then she shoots. And I was like, this looks. And first of all, if you're gonna see an explosion from a motorcycle, it expands. It doesn't stay like it just stood like fake, like in a cocoon, like in a cone. Like it, it, it just well, like. First of all, why does that motorcycle fly in the sky? It runs into the liquor and it just jumps in the air. It doesn't. It, I hate well, that it's because of like, the it impact. Like it did this, no, like this, like that. Just, that's, that's, a, that's not. It's physics. stupid. That's, yeah. So I was like, like I'm deducting another point on that because honestly, like she could have just walked. She could have just slammed the damn thing through the front door instead of coming through the window. I was like, what was the whole point of that? Like cooler. <laughs> I, whatever i guess it is honestly like a cigarette. I, yeah, yeah that scene was stupid too i didn't like that now nah, the ones that i enjoyed which i was like oh this is really good the scene in and i don't know why but it got me really hyped when they walked into the graveyard and they all started coming out the floor yeah. i got hyped i said this movie is like awesome because i was like this is really cool and she they snapping necks and i was like oh they whipping ass and i was like okay this is pretty cool then they run into the church. I was like, so that's pretty cool. The beginning with all of Rero, where he had to save the girl she got bit. I thought it was a pretty cool scene, but it looked kind of cheesy. I was like, wait a minute. How the hell can you shoot throwing yourself off a helicopter and pinpoint accuracy? I was like, this dude oh, was like sniping them. It's corny, but I like it. Yeah, I guess. I was just like, I, was like, I mean, it is what it is, but it was a cool sequence. I was like, that's fun. Her going down the, the, the wall. Of the building, it looked cool, but rewatching it now, I was like, man, you could tell she was not on the because it looked like no, her no. feet was on just like, like re- elevating moving her leg. Yeah, like it was in the green screen, yeah. and then they copied the building over, so she looked like sure. she's running it. it. It didn't look great, but look, all in all, I enjoyed the action. I, I thought it was really cool. The Jill Valentine, oh, Mama Sita, Jill Valentine is gorgeous. I was like, she's a gorgeous woman. That's but man, Santa they, she's a horrible actress though. Absolutely horrible. But perfect for this movie. That's why I was like, great for this movie. The problem is, they did not utilize her at all in this movie. Like, she she didn't have not much... She's the main character of the game. 
She's not the main character of this. Movie. That's what I was, I had to look it up, and I was like, wait a minute, she didn't even have like a a signature moment, Jill Valentine moment with like the guns, except in the beginning when she was. Oh, well, <laughs> that was the scene. I was like, oh my god, she was hot when when she walked into the police station and she shot all those things, and then of course bad acting kicked in because she goes, I you gotta that. shoot him. Yeah, in I the hate that part because of her acting. Yeah, you gotta shoot him in the head. She she is fine. Yeah, but she's- yeah, and last but not least, well. I'll leave it for a storyline. But anyway, yeah. other than that, I gave it a four. I, I yeah. thought it was a great, it was great action, not perfect. I don't think I'm going to be giving perfects throughout this for Resident uh, Evil. I, I, if but I give we'll a five see. for anything in a Resident Evil movie, yeah. I'll be gotta shocked. It got to be great. I'll be shocked. It has to be like some from shit that I've never remember, seen before. I don't think it's going to happen, but we'll see. No. We'll see. But, it's been a while. Well, anyway, four across the board. Let's get to the storyline. All right, let's go with the pros. Smart of them to at least include some characters from the game. Oliveira, cool. Jill Valentine, cool. Did they use them correctly? No. But were they there at least? Yes. So that was nice. I do like those. I do like the characters. I do like Oliveira in this, actually. I think he's cool. I like the characters in this movie better than the characters in the first movie. Like, I like the wheelchair guy. I like fake Liam Neeson. Nemesis is cool. Alice is one of the worst. The funny thing is she's one of the worst characters in the movie, and she's the main character. So I think they did a good job introducing some, like, characters you want to watch. You know what I mean? That's the end of the praise. Because this movie don't make a lick of sense. It makes nothing that happens make sense. It is all over the place. Like, it is... There's so much random stuff happening. The dialogue is horrible. Like, the script is bad. Like, very poorly written. The one-liners. Jill Val- Everything Jill Valentine says is terrible. And uh, just awful, awful, awful. All of Alice's dialogue is bad. And again, like you said, the character, yeah, it's definitely tied to the writing. Like, the way they wrote her is really bad. She's just there to, like, kill everything. She has no other purpose. She has no friends. Nobody from the first movie besides Matt, who's now a big, you know, a big nemesis guy. There's nothing to tie her to anything. She's just a killing machine, which can be fun to watch if it's not your second movie. Like, let's say this was the first movie and this is the character they introduced. Okay. And then from there you, but this is not what they introduced. And all of a sudden she's like mega because she has a virus, but then an antivirus, but then the virus stayed in her. So then it gave her powers. It's very silly. It's very stupid. I gave it a one I think it's really weak. Honestly, there, there, I was trying to like, besides the characters that I enjoyed, I was like, what, what is there here that's like good? Man, there was nothing. I, I had nothing. Like this is moved along by the action. Honestly, like you watch them do stuff just to get to the next action scene. And that's not good. And the ending, I really hate the ending. She ends up getting captured. Then they put her in a, in a glass full of water. Then she comes out and then she's like, boo, boo, boo. and she's writing with a pen. And then all of a sudden she's like, my name is Alice. I remember everything. <laughs> and then she just kills her. <laughs> she's like, she starts fighting everybody. Then she goes outside and all of a sudden Jill and Carlos, they're all like, they're all like super umbrella agents disguised and they take her away and then it ends. And I'm like, oh my God, the ending to part one is way better. Her in the streets with the shotgun. Like that makes me want to see what happens next. This I'm like, no, I mean, I'm going to watch the next one, but that didn't, it's not a good like cliffhanger or anything like that. One. It's a one for me. I, I mean, <laughs> you could just, I mean, it's, it's a one. Yeah. I thought the storyline was shit, like pure shit. It, it was horrible. You're right. It's, it's like four plots into a film, which yeah. I hate movies that give you like 4,000 plots because then it makes no sense. And it takes away from you watching a movie because then you're going, why is she doing this now again? Right. And this movie, I think, had a strong beginning, like I said, mm-hmm. with the Hive over reopening. I mean, they redid the dialogue because they were like, we have to go back into the, you know, reactivate mm-hmm. her and open up the Hive and do all this stupid shit. So I was like, OK, great. But that alone, I'll say this is cool. All the zombies came out just to explain how Raccoon City got overrun. I was like, that's cool. Now, my man's daughter getting hit by the truck and getting caught. I thought, to be honest with you, that should have just been the entire movie, like an escape of it from New York type of movie. You get me like, the daughter, I'll girl. help you help yeah. out. Yeah, and I would be like, you know what? That's actually very, it engages you because now you can introduce the Jill Valentine. You can introduce all the other characters because she's running through this chaotic world of Raccoon City. I would have been like, you know what? Great storyline. Nope, that's storyline number two. Then you got storyline number three. You got the nemesis. Now she has to fight the nemesis and then she's now remembering that it's Max and then we have to do the ultimate fight between good and evil at the end. And I'm like, this shit is not good. Because then, you know, at the end is the typical Hollywood that he's going to help the, the hero. 
And and I was like, that is stupid. Now, this is where I get one. I hate comedians in movies like this. And this is a trend that in 2000, it was happening. When they throw in comedians in action movies. For comic relief. I, for the stupid comic relief. And I hate that shit with a passion. And when I say a passion, like I stay away from action movies like that because I don't like it. I think it ruins movies that are really good. And then you have that one dickhead just making jokes as a character. They decided to put Michael Epps into this movie. And I was just like, this character could get killed in two seconds. And I loved it. He's annoying. He was annoying with the driving the streets. He sees the prostitutes. He was like, hey, girl, you still look good. And then crashes the car, which I was like, how do you crash your car when there's no one around you driving? <sighs> like, yeah, how yeah. is that even possible? You know, then he finds the, 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 the set of star guys. They get killed. Then he talks shit when the, um, when the nemesis turns around. And I was just like, yo, this is not funny, man. Like, even rewatching, I was like, this felt corny. forced in. Like, yes. Like, just stopped the momentum. And it's just him. And you know what? Speaking of, you know what makes no sense that he did that bothered me? He comes in. Stars guys are there. He's like, I don't need your guns. I got my own custom. And he got gold guns. He takes them out. Nemesis walks up, kills everyone, leaves him alive. He drops his guns and he never picks them back up. He just leaves. He just leaves them there. Like, what are you bragging about your custom guns? And then you're just going to drop them. There's a million zombies out there. Like, what? It, this makes no sense. Well, then the other scene also when they're in the school and then he goes, oh, you got bit. He goes, man, I'm walking with your ass the whole time. And yes. I was just like, I mean, it was cute, but I was just like, oh, man. I didn't like his character. Part. I agree. He, yeah. he is. I didn't like him at all. So anyway, with that said, he killed the movie for me, but he's not the solely, like, the reason why. Storyline is just atrocious. And again, Paul W. Anderson is a horrible screenwriter. This sequel proves it, but we got mm -hmm. five more to go. <laughs> so <laughs> let's see if any one of those look better. With that said, I gave it a one. You gave it a one overall. Yeah, so you're going to find this crazy, but somehow, some way, this still falls firmly in the watchable crap for me, okay? I, maybe it's the action scenes. Maybe it's Nemesis. I hate that it's blue. I think now you see what I mean. The whole movie's blue. It got that underworld blue filter on it because it all takes place at night, so yeah. everything's blue. You know what I mean? The funny thing about these Resident Evil movies is these first two all take place really within like a 24-hour period. Both yeah. Because the first movie's all in one. It's like a couple of hours, and then this is 13 hours later, and then it's a couple of hours. So this is all like one day, and you're telling me that in one day, not only is there a zombie outbreak, but all the people in the city die. Then they're able to build this like wall and quarantine <laughs> the whole entire city in like two hours, build a barricade where people can't cross the bridge. Then they're also able to get a nuke of whatever five kill a ton, Tons, whatever they say, yeah. nuclear weapon and get mobilize it and get it on a plane that's going to get like, I'm like, it's so stupid. And yet as I'm watching it, I'm like, I'm not bored. Is the story bad? Yeah, really bad. But the action scenes are entertaining. I like the care again. I like the characters. Like I liked hanging out with Oliveira. I liked hanging out with um with the wheelchair guy. Um, I even like the girl, the young girl. Like she's like the program. She's supposed to be the 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 girl that's like the design for the program. You know, because uh, it's his daughter and all the that. Hive, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Cool. Okay. That was cute. You get some video game characters. Like this movie sucks. <laughs> this movie sucks. <laughs> and yet, and yet, I find it to be moderately entertaining. With that said, I cannot in good conscience give this like a really good score. So I'm going to give it right down the middle of our allowable scores and give it a two and a half. I'm going to give it a two and a half because I am entertained by it for the most part, but I can't give it a positive and I can't give it a full negative because I'll be lying if I give it either one. So I'm going to go right in the middle with a two and a half. Well, <laughs> I do. I, I totally agree with you. This is a watchable crap. <laughs> Really I enjoyed is. it. I think Jill Valentine is hot. I think uh, Alice is hot. I think the f the film with the girls and everything, I think it was great. The action scenes were good. Other than that, the storyline is god-awful. The comedic relief is god-awful. I think the villains were really good in this movie. Enough for me to enjoy it. And I, I look, I'll say it right now. I think this is way, way, way better movie than Resident Evil 1 um, in terms of me enjoying it, in terms of watching it and sitting down. Would I watch this again? I absolutely I would, to be honest with you. Now, my overall score is going to be nuts because I gave it a three. I thought it was I'm gonna, good. You know what? I'm going to give it a three because you said something right there that I would watch this over part one. And yeah. I gave one a three. And so I give this the same score, but I like this one better, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm no, no, it, I'm I totally agree. It, I'm going to give it a three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a three. I think it's a good movie. Um, It's a good popcorn 
flick in terms of horrible movie. Like I, I could, this I could is a sit good down. Horrible movie. Yeah, if if I have time to kill and I have nothing to watch, I'm like, you know what? I could throw me some apocalypse up in this beast <laughs> and just skip over Mike Epson and then I'm good to go. I'm yeah. like, but it's a good movie. It's fun. I guess that's the, that's the word to say. It's, it's a, a fun movie. video game movie. I yeah. guess, right? Anyway, I gave it a three. If, What's if, your if you watch this with the spirit of like a B movie, it's a B movie, you know? Like this is like, what if Roger Corman could make a movie in the 2000s, like when he was in his heyday and had a mm. little bit more money? He might make this piece of crap, but you're going to be entertained. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're going to have right a fun time corn. munching some popcorn. So I agree, mm. but my overall is only a 14. This would have been a three and a half maybe if the story was even decent, honestly. But that, just it drags it down so bad. So I had a four, four, two, one, three. That's a 14 out of 25. I give it a 15. Three, Close. four, four, one, three. Yeah, 15. I give it a 15 out of a 25. I can see it around that ballpark. I mean, I can see yours too and the 13 also. I mean, either one is not even that bad. Honestly, I really don't even know where we lean between oh, mine, the mine audience. Be four, 14, I apologize. 14, not 13, 14. Oh, yours is 14. Okay, 14. so yeah. So in terms of, of where do we go between the critics and the audience, I, I, I think we're in the middle. In the, yeah. With these scores, we're in the middle between the two. Now, replay value, and there's something that we've been adding, or well, I added. Is it, repl- is it replayable? Yeah, I think it yeah. is replayable. I, I think yeah. it is. More than the first, to be honest with you. I, I wasn't too crazy with the first, but I think it does. I, I, yeah. I would I would slap it a, a two out of a five in terms of replay value. I, I, think, I, 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 I agree. Forget. I think, it's, I think it, yeah. it, it has... Re- I think most of this franchise has replay value. Yeah. This one, no, I think the first one does too, even though it's it's not great and there's a lot of things wrong with it. It does. This one is the same, except better action, a little bit better, more fun. This one's more fun than the first one. But I yeah. No, I agree with that. All right. What's coming up next on the podcast? All right. So next week we are our next episode, we will be wrapping up our female led action movies, besides our franchise, of course. A little 2011 movie called Colombiana starring Zoe Saldana. And then, of course, next week, Resident Evil Extinction, the third one. Now, <laughs> this one's the blue one. That one's the tan one, if I remember correctly. Everything's the tan. tan. There's sand. I remember the trailer for it. I thought it was awesome. It was like Las Vegas and it was all destroyed. I was like, I can't wait to see this movie. So I haven't watched it in years. But uh, we'll see how that one goes with the tan Resident Evil, a.k.a. Extinction. I saw that once, so I don't even remember, yeah. to be honest uh, with you. You know, fun fact, I saw that one at the theater, and it was the when they just introduced DLP projection technology, which was like high-def contrast, like projectors. Okay. Now, but probably by now standards, those are like low, low class. But in 2007, they great. were like... It looked amazing. I was like, this is the clearest movie I've ever seen in my life. (laughs) It was the same how like when you first got a Blu-ray, you were like, oh my God. And then you look at 4K and it's like, well, this is better. That's how it was. It's like, this is the best theater I've ever seen. Oh, Jesus. Now now that's like standard. If you guys want to follow us on our social media accounts, please follow Nate over on Instagram at Netflix Reviews. Check out the podcast with him and his friends called Netflix Movie Reviews. Anything action movie guys, head over to YouTube.com slash Geeks and Flicks for the video version of the podcast. Right now, our website, GeeksandFlicks.com, is under construction. I am revamping the entire website to make it easier for you guys to look for your favorite episodes. And, of course, you can watch and listen to it there. So again, you could, if you want to get merchandise and everything, you could go to geeksandflickstore.com for anything merchandise, action movie guys, or Geeks and Flicks. Other than that, I'm your host, Alex Figueroa, and he is Nate from Nate Flicks Reviews. Be awesome to each other and geek out. <laughs>